Hi, I'm Dan Chi, and here are my thoughts on Deepin as an open box user. First of all, let's begin with an introduction to Deepin, the desktop environment, because it is also a Linux distribution that comes with a desktop environment, but the main focus of everything Deepin is the actual desktop. So Deepin is meant to be beautiful first and foremost. If you go to the website, it will say, well, you know, this entire desktop environment is focused around just looking very, very good and sure having functionality for everyday use, so it's marketed towards the average user, but not for less powerful hardware. And I'll touch upon that later. It has a large library of Deepin programs, so Deepin's music player, notes program, and we'll talk about those later as well. And they're specifically for the desktop environment. Obviously, you can install them for other things, but they're really meant to be used with Deepin. So let's begin with exactly that, what I really liked, the ecosystem. So I really do enjoy when desktop environments have some kind of ecosystem. So in this case, we have the calendar program open, the file manager, the settings, and the text editor all open here in the deep in desktop environment, and they look beautiful. You can set an accent color you know, to change as well. It's part of the GTK theme. You know, they're just very well designed aesthetically, and they functionally work together. Here's another example. You got the PDF viewer. Got the notebook like uh, audio recording thing their notes program kind of it's called I think the draw or something but it's very good it's a vector software which is kind of odd for a notes program but okay and that's their terminal emulator running Kava so here's another screenshot got the calculator and the the really really good deepen music program it's it's a great program so yeah I really did like the deepen ecosystem so it's clearly a well-designed desktop environment and it's polished the programs fit in a set and functionally. However, it's a bit big. The space it takes up. So that's 646.75 megabytes to download, install deep in, and it's 174.38 to download it, which is a lot. And for some reason, if you look down on that screenshot at the bottom right, it installs a little thing in the kernel, which I don't really get the point of. I don't really know what that does, but I wouldn't let a desktop environment install something into my kernel. It's also literally big, so so the actual display scaling by default is set to 1.25 like it's just stupidly large for some reason ah, that that kind of caught me off guard but I just had to lower it and restart and it was basically fixed I don't think that's such a good idea I guess it's supposed to be marketed towards you know users who want a lot of beautiful and I guess high resolution monitors come with that like a really beautiful environment on a high resolution monitor but I, I don't think it looks any good so I'm not a big fan of the display scaling being so high by default here as you can see I've turned it down to one but it's still quite large here's another thing I disliked performance so deepen literally uses around 1.7 just gigabytes this is idle not doing anything at all which is a lot that sounds like we're getting to Windows numbers there it's a lot for a desktop environment and sure it does look good and it has a lot of effects but that's a lot of memory so it is an incredibly high resource usage it's more than gnome and this is mostly due to a combination of using GTK K3, which is heavy, along with heavily theming it, and animations. It has a lot of background processes that run to ensure certain functionality at the desktop environment. So yeah, it's it's got a lot of stuff running in it. And another thing I disliked is it's a little too closed. I'm not like by closed, I mean more that I'm not a big fan of them theming GDK the way they do. It does look really good, but you know, Deepin is fast, so this isn't concerning freedom or just code availability. So when I say closed, I'm not talking about it being proprietary. Although some people say that it's Chinese spyware, but that's not really justified. But as I said, things like the global GTK3 theme can mess some programs up. And it's very clear when you start Deepin that it's really meant to be used with its programs and not the programs that you want to choose, which is normally what will happen in a window manager or a more stock desktop environment. So yeah, my conclusion is Deepin is a bit weird to me. It's very polished, a very polished desktop environment to choose. It's very well made and stuff. It's got a lot of programs, but it saw some glaring flaws, like the fact that it, any program which isn't really meant for it sort of clashes and it has that GTK3 theme which can mess some programs up. It's resource heavy, which I don't really like. I don't like pro, you know, desktop environments that are really resource heavy and a bit bloated. That's not good. But there's no denying it does look beautiful. Just going back to those screenshots from before, yeah, it, it looks really, really good. It's got very nice theming when it works together and nice icons by default as well. So, I hope you enjoyed this short video on the Deepin desktop environment. I'll be doing more of these desktop environment rundowns. Goodbye.